So I can be. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So we have a distinguished guest. What's that about? Casey, <laughs> you'll have to ask her. <laughs> I asked for backup. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So should we convene our meeting? Okay. Do we need to vote? I don't know why I always forget this. No, you're just a chair. I think you just yeah. say meeting convened this okay. particular we'll time. Order. Yeah. Mm. I can see all the members, Raloon, David, and Eric are in attendance. Casey, would you like to take lead us off? Sure. So um, we had a couple of things we needed to talk to y'all about. Um, the first one was the health agent vacancy. Um, the select board, I've talked to the select board about the vacancy itself. We lost our health agent several months ago. He took a job with the state. We've been operating and it's been a little bit challenging for the two other agents that we have, but we've been operating um, as best we can considering the activity in town, especially food service activity. So um, what that sort of led me to ask the chair, the select board chair was, could we hire to replace the agent that left? And we developed the vacancy but it would appear that Board of Health agents are in short supply. So I wanted to ask um, personnel to approve a hiring range of step one to step nine. And I have, I pulled it up before the meeting. Um, hold on a second, let me just move it. I have two screens, so I have to put things in different screens just so I can organize my brain. Um, so that range would be, I'll just share it real quick. Um, so the health agent is classified under grade F. The beginning, the beginning of the scale, step one is 3521. Um, step nine is 4290. Um, I'm fairly sure we need to hire within try to hire within that range and we may end up on the top end of it because they're hard to, the health agents are hard to find, especially health agents with the qualifications we need and those qualifications include. Um, everything from housing to food service. Um, this is a full time position. No, it's 20 hours a week. It was budgeted for 20 hours a week. We've seen the activity tick up quite a bit. And a lot of that has to do with food trucks and events that have happened in town. Yeah. And yeah. some of that stuff you can't predict at the beginning during a budget season. We had no idea how much activity was gonna happen over at Treehouse, for instance. But there's always there's also been activity at Deerfield Academy and that stuff requires inspections, which sort of increases what we would have normally thought we needed. But there's also a dearth of health agents. Um, they're in pretty high demand and they move around quite a bit. So I wanted to try to get ahead of that. Has anybody reached out to Jennifer Hoffman? No. Isn't that kind no, of- We would put a vacancy notice out and she'd be welcome to apply. Yeah. Yeah, I did read the article in the newspaper. Uh, but we still have to go through the process. So I wanted yeah, to get approval so I can publish a range. Yeah. So would you consider giving me that um, latitude to publish step one to step nine? Can I ask, I mean, get to what would qualify someone that's a big, that's a big range. So like what would qualify someone when you interview them to offer them the higher, the, the higher end of that scale? Mostly like, it revolves around certifications. Um, there's a lot of certifications when you're a health agent. Um, hold on a second. I'm just looking for it. <clears throat> Sorry. I was looking for the health agent job description. Um, shoot. I 
for some reason I can't find it. I should have opened it and I didn't. I didn't. I'm sorry. I mean, the question really is why wouldn't we do this? We want we need to get somebody. Um, we do. We need, want flexibility to hire. So I'd, I'd make a motion that we approve the, um, um, the hiring range step one to step nine. Is that, does that cover the what you asked for? Yes. Yeah. Okay, any, do we wanna have any further discussion before we vote? Is Eric gonna second it? Oh, sure, yeah, I can second. I forgot about the whole need to second it. I will second David. Okay, then um, I, I guess that that's, I mean, I, I, I agree. I mean, it, it's, you've tried and you have, you know, there it's been hard to find people. And so we know from other towns that it's hard to find people too. Yeah. Um, and we and certainly it's need really, it. It, a lot of it is not having the people with certifications. Yeah. Yeah. And there okay. are certifications in, I know they're in the job description. I just don't remember the details of each certification, but they're there. And that's really what we need is you know, the certifications to deal with how and the experience to deal with housing, food service, and septic. I know you guys know that it's pretty wet in town. And yeah. that experience with and, and the qualifications to deal with the septic issues is also a, a big key thing that we need. Okay. Well then I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. Bless you. Okay. Um I'll do roll call. Um Eric Farrell? Yes. David Sharp? Dave Sharp, yes. And Rilun Bialik, yes. Thank you. So I'll go to the next thing. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, the next thing is the town clerk office reorganization. But if you give me a second, can I ask a quick question of Tim? Um, and I actually had to publish a revision to this agenda um, after the select board met on Thursday. Um, Tim, do you want me to ask the chair if we can move the other item along or do you want me to go through the town clerk reorganization first? Oh, um, it's not my meeting, but if somebody wanted to, I already spoke with what I'm here for with David and I reached out to Raloon but wasn't able to speak with her. So okay. if she's willing, that's fine. Raloon, would you be willing to push an item unanticipated ahead of my town clerk dissertation? I'll try to make that short too. Sure. I'm sorry I missed you, Tim. I didn't. No, I texted and I wasn't sure if I um, texted the right number. <laughs> So it's probably that I texted somebody who was wondering who's Raloomba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so because I don't see it. But okay, no, that's fine. Go ahead, Casey. I just I don't I you're the chair. I just wanted to ask. Oh. Does anybody else mind if we push that item that was unanticipated? So it's really about the planning economic development coordinator hire. Um the in the group that was assisting the board with the evaluation of applicants had recommended initially had two candidates to recommend. Um, but the at one point, the um, one of those candidates dropped out because the pay rate was insufficient. So the select board condu conducted a final er interview with the first candidate and after some back and forth um, that candidate declined the position. Um, because the position expectations didn't meet their career goals, so we went back and looked at the other candidates and. Um, there was some outreach done to that potential second candidate and. After some conversation, um, if the salary was increased, that person was more interested in the position. So the select board actually held a final interview with this person. And there's some interest, particularly on the board's part, to hire. But for purposes of negotiating, um, we need the personnel board to approve a hire above step one 
Um, and to be competitive for this type of position, and this is planning economic development coordinator. So there's this, there's a lot of complexity to the position. It includes planning elements, grant writing elements, and economic development, which sort of are assisted by those two things. Um, we need to be more competitive, which means we need to be up to, and I'll pull it up again, up to a step seven. And recall this position is graded at a grade F. And the beginning of the range is 3521. Step seven would be 4083. And I can share screen if you want so you can see it. Um, hold on one sec. So this is grade F right here. Um, I think to hire this person, we need to be at least a step six, more likely a step seven. So we, I knew that I needed to reach out to the personnel board once the board advised me they wanted to pursue a hire because the bylaw requires it. So I think in order for us to hire, we need to be at least a step six, preferably a step seven if necessary. And the board directed me to negotiate it at either of those rates. So would the personnel board approve a higher at not less than step seven um, for this particular position is really the request I need to forward to you. Not less than step six. And that's right, yeah. not less than step six, but potentially step seven. And I asked him to come so that he could sort of represent what the board discussed a little more from, from the perspective of the select board. So, um, Raloon, with your permission, I'll just quickly say I, I spoke with David um, while he was up in Vermont uh, by phone and uh, explained that a uh, couple of things. It's very similar to the health agents um, situation. There are not many people. It's a highly competitive field right now because a lot of municipal government is, there just aren't applicants and they're, it's a, uh, people are leaving you know, town clerk positions and they're not uh, being, there's no pipeline for trained people to come in. Um, the candidate that we're talking about was, um, is, is a town administrator in a smaller community, but has a lot of experience working with, he worked for six years in the state legislature working for Adam Hines and others. Um, so he's got a lot of, uh, one of the things that we think a planner needs to have is connections with the state legislature and to be a su successful grant writer also understand the state process. So um, from a standpoint of um, experience uh, to get someone of this caliber to come in, um, he left the legislature so he could pursue uh, a different career path and um, was four years as a cult consultant up in New York state and then move back because this is where he's from. He's from Northampton. Um, <clears throat> my estimation was he was the more qualified candidate, but he took himself out. Um, and rather than go out and repost this position before we explore all our options, um, we asked uh, if he would, with the understanding that we would be negotiate, we would be willing to negotiate on a, a pay package that was similar to what he's currently getting. Um, would he do a public interview because? And I think the fact that he was willing to do the public interview is a is a big step because before he could control and not, not tell Blaine tell tell the town he works in that he was thinking about moving to a different position. So um, I I'm optimistic that Casey and he will reach an agreement. But I think when the original posting was made, none of us had any experience of what is a planner, um, how much will we need to pay somebody. And um, the candidates that we interviewed that might be considered entry level candidates fresh out of college, they really weren't, um, they wouldn't have been in the best interest of the town to hire and train them, um, particularly at what I considered not an insignificant salary of 75,000. So I think we're better served to, to have a more qualified or slightly higher paid person. Um, so that was our thinking. Um, In terms of accomplishing goals, I think the experience that this person has across disciplines would be very helpful. 
Um, and I think if we had the ability to hire or to offer up to step seven, I think we could, I think we could attract that talent. So thank you All right. for, for I'll make, considering it. <laughs> i make a motion that we um, approve the town uh, hiring for this position at no less than a step six. Seven. No. Please. No, no less than a step six up to a oh, step. Oh, yeah. Seven. See, I'm getting that confused. Up to. I'll second that. Um, do we want to discuss any more before we vote? No, I'm good. You're, you feel comfortable? I do. Okay. I, I do too. Um, so I'll do roll call. David Sharp. Dave Sharp, aye. Uh, Eric Farrell. Aye. And Relin Bialik. Yes. Aye. Thank you very much. We really Yeah, thank you for your consideration. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Tim. I appreciate you. All right. And I I will while I have you all, I want to say thank you for doing what you do. Um, I know that uh, it's a very important role and, and I appreciate the work you put into it. So thank you. Thank you, Tim, for all you do. Tim. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. So I had a thought while he was talking. Um, if we run into a similar situation with the Board of Health agent, um, would personnel consider approving a hire of up to step nine? Didn't we just do that? What, we, what I thought, what did we just do for? That's what you did for um, the planning economic development coordinator, but it occurs to me, I don't want to be back here in the same situation next month. No, 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 no. no what are we, we just, both already. We you, just approved, you approved a range. Right. So, so why? So okay. isn't that up to nine, it, the range? Wasn't that up, up to nine? nine? I just wanted to make sure, cause it, I thought about it. We were talking, I was talking about the publication range, but it occurred is to that, me is the publication of the posting different than what you're approved to actually offer a candidate? I, well, you know, it occurs to me, I asked about the publication, but not about offering the candidate um, a salary or a, a pay rate. Do you need a so motion maybe I to should offer that pay rate in addition to the publication? Right. I might, I should have probably framed it differently and asked you to approve a range, approved a higher range of between one and nine. Well, I kind of thought that's what we were doing because okay. I just, it occurred to me that I was, didn't want to put you guys in the same situation, but maybe I asked the question wrong. No, I, I, I understood the, the, that initial request for the health agent to be, we'll post it that range. And that basic to me that by posting it at that range, that gives us the ability to, if need be offer up to that, that step. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I mm -hmm. agree. Just don't want you to be in a so situation. so Casey. I mean, is this basically where we're going now? Where this is the job climate? Know. Is that basically every every position like we our step one is is not competitive and doesn't <clears throat> well that's not my plan for the town clerk reorganization. Let's put it that way. Um, I don't know. Honestly, some of the board of health, I just know there's not a lot of health agents. Um, I know there's not a lot of town clerks. Like Tim said, there's really no pipeline. Health yeah. agents are hit or miss. Um, and out here, it's harder for us to pay people to be here than it is for people out east. Yeah. Um, one of the assistant agents we have now, her, her daughter works out east and moved out east because the pay rate's so much higher, but they do the same work. They're both health agents. It's Cost of living is higher. My there. brain thinks oh it's my absurd. God, cost of living is so much higher out there. Yeah. So let me talk about the town clerk, clerk office yeah. reorganization. Um, we tried not to go this route, and really, we tried to to address this through the um, the hiring process we did before. So what we had done was a hiring process for a part time town clerk having a full time assistant town clerk. And over the last several months, and this was actually, just in case you want to know, David, this was, we actually had this conversation, we meaning the accountant and I had this conversation after town meeting, because we watched how the election happened. Um, so basically, 
two things were going on. We were watching what was going on in the office. And then when we tried to hire, we couldn't find anybody um, that we, that was interested in taking a part-time position at the pay rate, which is a pretty good pay rate. Um, and frankly, after talking to a, at least one other town clerk that I know I talked to two, but one that is close by that lives close by, um, reorganization may be a better way to address it because we could probably attract um, more qualified people. Although we also recognize that the staff we have have been um, pretty good about researching what needs to happen. It's just Town clerks are, are in short supply. And actually there was, the Boston Herald published an article a couple of weeks about it. Um, essentially, we've lost so many town clerks. There's over a third of the state has had turnover in town clerks. Um, and so we went back and tried to figure out how we could make this position more attractive within the budget. And so it was, me, Brenda, the town accountant, and Chris Nolan, who's the assistant town administrator, we sat down and went through this again. And basically our request to you is to affirm a reorganization of the clerk's office um, so that we can proceed in a different way to hire a, a full-time town clerk and a part-time, in other words, flip it. Full-time town clerk, part-time assistant clerk. Um, so for purposes of impacts on the budget, this, re this reorganization wouldn't impact this year's budget. And I know David may have a question about this later. Um, but essentially, we think that the legislative changes that happened through the Votes Act, the lack of town clerks, there's a lot of people leaving, this, leaving the job, retiring, because there's a lot of changes that happen. Um, and there's a lot of requirements and complexity on town clerks that didn't exist before. Add to that the scrutiny on elections, and a lot of people are doing this, putting their hands up and running away. Um, and frankly, I can't blame them. I've watched two elections and been much more involved in what the town clerk's doing um, over the last six months, eight months maybe, so I get a better idea of what it means. Um, but some of these factors impact our ability to hire. So if you were to endorse a reorganization, it would help us position the town to be better, comp to compete better. Um, and I sent you a memo earlier, I can screen share it so you can see the charts. Um, so, we're, I mean, it's, I have no problem with this. It's just a comment that we seem to have approved a reorganization of the town clerk's office already, to, to, you know, to switch it to the, or at least the town did, or finance committee did, just, you know, to go with this whole half-time town clerk, full-time assistant town clerk. And now you're basically saying we're just re, we're flipping that because it's just not working out. Essentially. Yeah. We can't attract the talent to get, yeah. and the, the town clerk job, you have to have a permanent clerk. Yeah. I wish I could get around it. I mean, we'll be at town meeting next week and we'll have to elect a clerk of the meeting. We don't have a permanent clerk. That's just the nuance of what's required of the position in the in the statutes so i think we'll be more competitive if we flip it like this otherwise i wouldn't have asked we like i said we tried to stay so what did you just say about electing a town clerk it's yes so at town meeting if you don't have a permanent clerk you have to do an an, an election during town meeting to have a clerk of the meeting that's what the statute requires because we don't have a permanent clerk. We only we have assistant. Oh, clerk. to have a clerk at the meeting. We're not electing a town clerk. You mean no, just, no, 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 no. Okay. At yeah, town yeah, meeting, yeah. we would okay. do it. Yeah, I was confused. No, this is an appointed position. Yeah. Um. So, but it, what we tried to do was stay within the parameters of the budget. Yeah. So, if you, I don't know if you saw the memo. I can show it if you want me to. But there's two different yeah. tables. Um. Essentially, what we planned for was a higher of a town clerk at step one. Um, and that that's 38.73 an hour. And our normal calculation um, for a year's salary is 20.88 hours. We don't do it 52 weeks, 40 hours a, a week. 
we try to nail it down by days and hours. So we try to be a little more. Um, this is step one you just said? Step one. So what's to say we're not back here at the next meeting asking for- God, I hope not. <laughs> okay. That's all I can say is God, I hope not because we're doing the best we can to make it competitive. We thought if we changed it to a full-time clerk, it becomes more competitive for people. Mm -hmm. um, and we looked at some of the other clerks and assistant clerks in Franklin County. Um, the other thing is, is what we, in trying to develop this reorganization plan, we reduced the assistant town clerk's hours. So it would be up to 15 hours a week. Um, and one of the reasons we can do this without an impact of the budget this year is because we've already gone over a quarter without a town clerk. So we have a little bit of leeway. Um, and that would allow us to present you with hours in a calculation. We would have an assistant town clerk at 36. So it right now it's 2433 an hour. If town meeting approves the reorg approves that change in the class comp, it would increase the cost of the assistant town clerk. Uh, because the pay rate would change that person would move or that position would move to a grade E. Um, we also looked at Franklin County's assistant clerks and we think that's more competitive for the county. Uh, after that, looking at that and the we use the most recent um, salary information we could find from the from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Is the 525 hours, um, what you just said, is an adjustment because the year's already gone, or is that what we're anticipating always going to be the number of hours for the assistant? I don't know if it would always be that way. I think it really, next year is going to be a little bit of a challenge because mid-year, so calendar year is really the election year. Um, we don't know what it's going to look like for after the beginning of FY25 because we have to do those calculations for the budget season. But I think what Brenda would probably do is keep, stay right around 15 hours a week. David, it, it why did, why did, we why, did, why was our budget so much higher than what we anticipate the cost being? We so, had a part-time town clerk at up to 25 hours. That was the original calculation. With a full-time town uh, assistant clerk, um, at a lower pay rate. Okay, so, you, you, so we were at 40 hours, for argument's sake, we were, at four, we were at 40 hours at the lower pay position right. and twenty up to 25 hours at the higher pay was what we are currently at. And we're looking to kind of flip it to have 40 hours at the higher pay, but only up to 15 hours at the lower pay. Which means- and by should... pay, I mean the positions. Yes, but that means it should be a lot more money than what we voted for. What we did was we reduced the hours of the assistant home. We reduced the hours expectation from 20 to 25 for a town clerk to 10 to 15 for an assistant clerk. While changing, if we did this, we would change the um, town clerk to a full-time position. So the adjustment, you still have a full-time position, but you're reducing your reliance on a part-time position in terms of hours. No, I understand all that. I'm just, it doesn't make sense then that the town had come up with 101.8 for a budget. There's also some overtime in there for the elections. I don't have that sheet in front of yeah. me. I'm sorry, David. Yeah. Um, the Budget sheet is produced by Brenda, and I forgot to ask her to print it for me, the original yeah. budget sheet. I'm sorry. I mean, if, I this, if this number is accurate, this 101.8, then there's clearly no reason not to approve. I mean, there's no real financial impact here in doing this. We you, tried you, to make adjustments so there would be but, less of a financial impact when we right. thought but about it just the organization. Make any sense. I'm just wondering whether there's something missing from this line item of 101.880 that didn't include that well, wasn't just the salaries. Did you go from 25 hours for the part time to 15 for the assistant? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Yeah, but they've gone. Lower. They've gone. They've gone from twenty to forty. It's the higher pay amount. Higher pay. Yeah. So if you do the calculus, it's so you right. budgeted at twenty five. Say the budget that they lined was was at the twenty five hours a week at the higher pay. What it, what was what's the current rate on that? Do we have for the for the town clerk? For the town clerk. Yeah, which is currently listed as a part time. I'm thinking, hold on. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, because I see where you're coming from, David. It's like, yeah. just, just want to, we definitely want to make sure that the, that the numbers are, like you said, we're not missing something. Yeah. The good news is, is I had Brenda do the numbers. I trust her more than I trust myself. Um, I'm just trying to see if I have the up the last budget line for that budget sheet for that line. So we had okay. So when we <clears throat> initially suggested this, the current organization, which is full-time assistant clerk, part-time town clerk. Um, we had hours, like I said, of up to 25 and that rate was the same rate. So it was uh, grade G step one. So 3873. Um, the assistant clerk was full-time 40 hours a week at grade C step three. And then we had additional, we had 20 hours of overtime accounted for because there were times that the assistant town clerk as an hourly employee um, may have had to cover the office. 20 hours per week? No, 20 hours total. For the year. Generally it relates yeah. to elections and registration. Yeah. Um, was the, um, what's, the, what's the current rate for that, for the assistant town clerk at the 40 hours? 24.33 an hour. Okay, so in essence, you had it was about it was a roughly even split. You had about fifty thousand and change allocated specifically to the town clerk position, which was a part time at twenty five hours. Yep. And then we had forty hours a week for the assistant town clerk at the lower rate, which comes out to about fifty thousand and change. And then you said twenty hours of overtime total. Like so the, the the 101 number looks pretty pretty good. The top line number 101 come I'd have to do the, for the all, I think for the, that was the budgeted amount. Yeah, so the budgeted amount of 101 and change I think is what what you were showing us in that in the memo. Right. That that <laughs> seems to jive pretty well. Um <clears throat> And what are the updated numbers now that we are saying the full time town clerk at at what pay rate? So the full time town rate. clerk would be thirty eight seventy three. And I'm just showing the memo. Um, okay. At, so that would be the hourly calculation that we use, which is twenty eighty eight. Um, I think that's one hundred sixty two years or, or one hundred sixty two days. Or okay. Something. And then the assistant town clerk would be, and this is if town meeting approves the revised classification plan so if they don't approve it you've got a town clerk an assistant town clerk at up to 24 33 an hour 525 hours that's about a little over, just shy of thirteen thousand dollars if the assistant town clerk position as it's been regraded um, is approved by town meeting, then you're looking at a pay rate of 3062 an hour for 525 hours. That's about $16,000. Um, so you're still within so, the 101880. I'll stop screen sharing. All right. So in essence, it, so if there, if they, if town meeting does not approve the changes to the assistant town clerk pay rate, which we had already talked about in a previous meeting. Yeah. In essence, you're looking at a wash <clears throat> in terms of total money. Like if I'm looking at the memo that you've shared, um, you know, the assistant town clerk at 12. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, I see what you got. Yeah. So you're, 
93 versus 93.6 versus 96.9. Right. About a $3,000 difference. Okay. But it did require a significant reduction in hours for the assistant. Group. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so that's that's where you're getting the savings is the you're going from a 40 hour to a 10 to 15 hour right which more than compensates for the increase of the 15 dollar 15 hours at the higher pay by moving the town clerk from part time to full time yeah i can see how that can that can even out does that make sense david mhm mm yeah so basically we wondered if you would endorse that um, I'm going to present the same request to the select board on Wednesday. Um, All right, I'd make a motion that uh, we uh, accept this request for approval of a reorganization of the town clerk's office as presented. I'll second that. All right, I I think it's a good idea. Certainly, we've talked about the need for the full for the full town clerk to be more available. Um, does anyone want to talk more before we vote? All right, then I'll do roll call. Uh, Eric Farrell? Yes. David Sharp? Dave Sharp, yes. And Raloon Bialik, yes. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, so just a quick update. The recommendation for the, re, for the regrading is in the town meeting warrant. Um, and the table's been published. Town meeting is next Monday at seven. Um, the board, we're working on motions for that meeting. So in case you need to know, um, the motions will be published in the guide, unless you want me to send you the motions individually. I don't know if anybody is going to be attending. Um, I did, I put it out there because I didn't know. Um, my question is, if one of you is attending, do does one of you want to make the motion um, to regrade? I didn't put it in my motions as yet. I wanted to ask you because I have to finance committee had a meeting. I have to redo my motions after that meeting. You mean the flip flop of the town clerk position? No, actually make the motion on town meeting floor to um, accept the revised classification compensation plan. The select board can do it. I'm just asking you if one of you wants to do it, if you're gonna be there. I mean, I can, if you think it would sort of help the help the presentation that it's not, you know, that there's another committee that's put eyes on it. Um, okay. Would you mind if I did that, Roland? No, I don't mind. Would you give me text to read? Oh yeah, I'll send you the motion itself. Um, Denise Mason is doing the motions for the planning board, unless she tells me no, <laughs> which I don't I expect. to do that. Unless so in Sarah some cases, David, that's you what I want it. You guys want to do it? <laughs> Poor David. He just got out of a difficult conversation the, the finance committee was having about the warrant. So, um, and I didn't know who was going to attend. I throw it out there. If you don't want to do it, it's fine. Your recommendation was published in the warrant. Um, but like you said, sometimes it carries more weight if it comes from the committee that does some of that oversight. So I you can certainly what, change you know, it if you want to do it, really. You know Otherwise, I'll have the board do it. You know what, Casey? I just realized it's the twenty third. I, I, got a, I may not be able to be there actually. Okay, I'll have the board do it. But I wanted to throw it out there in case you I, wanted to do it. That number sounds familiar. I, I, I double checked it, and yeah, I might be. I might have to go to New Hampshire for the day. Okay. So I'm All sorry. All right. I'll just assign it to the select board and just remind them that you guys approved it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I would do it if I, for sure, if I was knew I was going to be here, but. Okay, that's all I had. And thank you so much for listening and for your assistance. We appreciate it. Yeah, great. Anything else before we adjourn? Nope, sounds good. All right, motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Eric Barrell? Yep. Dave Sharp? Dave Sharp, yes. And Raloon Bialik, yes. All right. Thank you for your time. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.